Hello everyone! In this video, we'll talk about the solution of Pell's equation in general. This is a really cool topic and I'm excited. I hope you'll remember that in a previous video, we had solved the equation x squared minus 2y squared is equal to 1 for prime x and y values. This time, we'll go over the general solution of Pell's equation, then I'll give you some examples. References will be in the description, actually, the Wikipedia article on Pell's equation is pretty good. It gives you the definition, a little bit of history, a large table of solutions for several different Pell's equations, and plenty of links. Let's dive in. So, this is the Pell's equation, x squared minus dy squared is equal to 1. D is an integer that is not a perfect square. You can also call that a square-free integer. So if d is equal to 4, then we don't get a Pell's equation because that is going to be factorable. And then, you know, then we can kind of talk about the solution in a different way. So having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. But first of all, I'd like to define, I'd like to define the fundamental solution to this equation. Obviously, this equation has a solution, right? And if it does, let's say the solution is x1 comma y1, such that x1 is the smallest. So if x1 is the smallest integer such that x1 squared minus d times y1 squared is equal to 1, so in other words, x1, y1 is a solution, then it's actually called the fundamental solution of this equation, all right? So this is called the fundamental solution because x1 is the smallest possible positive integer, okay? All right, now, here's the idea. If you can find x1 comma y1, which is the fundamental solution, then you can find all the other solutions. And how many solutions are there? We'll take a look at it in a little bit. So stay tuned. Now, what are we going to do next? Well, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to take this expression, even though d is not a perfect square, we can still factor this, not over the field of integers, of course. We're going to use a different field. How are we going to factor it? Well, this is what it looks like. So we can just go ahead and write down the x squared minus dy squared as x plus y root d and x minus y root d, right? When we multiply these expressions from difference of two squares, obviously, we're going to get x squared minus dy squared. Okay, great. So in other words, this is going to be the field of z bracket uh, square root of d, right? Okay, cool. Now, since x1 comma y1 is a solution, we can basically go ahead and replace x with x1 and y with y1. So we're going to be getting the following factorization, x1 plus y1 root d multiplied by x1 minus y1 root d, and then the whole thing is equal to 1. Caution, there's going to be a lot of algebra and theory ahead of you. All right, so you've been warned. Now, what are we going to do next? Well, since this product is equal to 1, something nice about 1 is that you can basically raise it to any, raise it to any power, and the answer is still going to be 1. So if you go ahead and take this expression, so let's go ahead and take this expression and write it as, I'm just going to copy the same thing. I just want to show you what we're going to do, and this is really cool. It's a really cool thing to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically raise both sides to an integer power, such that n is greater than 1. Because if I raise it to the first power, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to raise both sides to the power n. Obviously, I'm still going to have 1 on the right-hand side. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that if x1 and y1 are solutions, then when we expand these radicals by using the binomial theorem, and we're going to be arranging these again, and we're going to be getting something nicer, such as this one, xn plus yn root d multiplied by xn minus yn root d. Okay, great. So when we raise it to the nth power and put the terms with square root of d together, and then the, all the coefficients, and then everything else on the other side, you know, just kind of arrange it in the same way, we're going to be getting the nth solution in other way, in other words. So we're basically arranging the solutions numerically here, and this is the nth so solution. So what's the relationship between the first solution and the nth solution? So we're going to go ahead and generalize this, and then I'll give you the general solution, and then we'll do some examples. Okay, cool. Now, how are these related? Well, first of all, they're equal to each other. Why? Because they're both equal to 1. 
And moreover, we can safely say that the positive one, the solution, the general solution that comes uh, with the positive sign, is basically equal to the first one, the first solution, which is x1, comma y1, raised to the nth power. Why? Because if you go ahead and expand it, that's what you're going to get. That's how we define xn and yn, actually, in this case. And then, if, you, if this is true, then obviously, for the minus version, it's just going to be the other one. Because if two expressions are going to be conjugates, then their nth powers are also going to be conjugates, right? Okay, cool. That's how they're related, very closely related. Well, what does this give us? This gives us really good results. Because from here, we can basically solve this as a system and then find the general solution for Pell's equation. All right, cool. So this is what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and solve for xn and yn. Let's go ahead and do it. Because xn and yn, basically as an ordered pair, is going to give us the nth solution. And you can replace n with pretty much anything, even 1, to find any solution you want. So now, I'm going to add these two equations, obviously. That's going to give me 2xn is equal to x1 plus y1 root d to the power n. Plus, don't forget, that's a plus sign, not a product, because if you multiply them, you're going to get 1, obviously, right? So you're going to be adding them. And obviously, from here, I want to get x sub n. So why don't we just go ahead and divide both sides by 2, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and take this whole expression. I know it kind of looks complicated, but don't worry. It's going to simplify. All right. So that's my xn value. So that's obtained by adding. What happens if you subtract these two equations? Then the xn is going to cancel out, and you're going to get something like 2yn root d is equal to pretty much the same thing with the minus sign, x1 plus y1 root d to the nth power minus x1 minus y1 root d to the nth power. And then obviously you're going to divide both sides by 2 times root d to get the, the value of yn, which is going to equal this expression x1 plus y1 root d to the nth power minus the expression x1 minus y1 root d to the nth power all over 2 root d. All right, cool. So that basically gives us the general solution for the Pell's equation. Provided that, you can find the fundamental solution. And fundamental solution is a lot of times found by guess and check. And we can look at our example that we've done a while ago. I'll in also include the link to that video, x squared minus 2y squared is equal to 1, th with the prime numbers. But of course, we're also going to tackle that here in the general case. Okay? So, this is the general solution. Now, here's a good question, right? How do you find x1, comma y1, which is the fundamental solution? If you can't find it, how are you going to find the other ones, right? And let me tell you something. You can replace n with positive integer values, so there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, how do you find the fundamental solution? That's a good question, and we'll probably answer that later. But let me just tell you that it's related to continued fractions. So a lot of interesting theory behind this. Let's go ahead and look at some examples. For example, we talked about this a while ago, x squared minus 2y squared is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and factor it. I get x plus y root 2, x minus y root 2 is equal to 1. So I'm thinking about, you know, two integers, x and y, such that the, the product is going to give me 1. And that can actually be obtained. If you think about it, like 9 minus 8 is equal to 1, right? So you can write it as 3 plus 2 root 2 multiply by 3 minus 2 root 2 is equal to 1. This shows you, because it's 9 minus 8, this shows you that 3 comma 2 is actually a solution to this equation. And remember, th since 2 and 3 are both prime numbers, this is going to be the solution that we talked about in a previous video. And you can look at that video. I'll include the link in the description and may possibly in the comments because uh, we solved it in a different way because we were looking for prime solutions and it wasn't really general Pell's approach. Okay, now, so 3 comma 2 is a solution, but here's a million dollar question. How do you get the next one, right? Well, you do have a formula, right? There you go. Well, if you don't like the formula, here's what you can do. Go ahead, take this expression, right? Square both sides, square everything. Then you'll get the next solution. What happens if you square 3 plus 2 root 2? Okay, sometimes instead of saying 3 comma 2 is a solution to this equation, 
people say three plus two root two is a solution. It just in another way, it's not accurate, but that's how they put it sometimes. Anyway, let's just go ahead and square this expression. And we're gonna be getting something like three squared plus two times three times two root two, which is gonna give you 12 root two plus two root two squared, which is equal to nine. I mean eight, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so this is gonna give you 17 plus 12 root two. And obviously the other one is gonna give you 17 minus 12 root two. That's why we said that if two expressions are conjugates, their powers, their positive integer powers are also going to be conjugates from binomial theorem. All right, this, this means what? This means that 17 comma 12 is another solution to this Pell's equation. And remember, this came up in one of the comments, I think, or maybe more. Somebody said that, hey, what about this solution? Because 12 is not a prime number, we weren't looking for that type of solution. But now, in this video, we can talk about it. 17 comma 12, and how does that work? Let's go ahead and verify that. 17 squared is equal to 289. And as you know, 12 squared is 144. Two times 144 is equal to 288. 289 minus 288 is equal to one. And yes, that satisfies our equation. And obviously, if you take three plus two root two and raise it to the third power, you can find another solution and then you can find another solution, so on and so forth. There's even recurrence relations that will generate all solutions based upon the other ones. All right, but there's, there's a lot of uh, depth that goes into this. That's why I don't wanna really go into too much depth. I wanna keep this video short. All right, so this is one example. Let me give you another example. You can, you know, something to uh, look into is uh, x squared minus six y squared is equal to one. Now, like I said earlier, there is a way to find the solutions, you know, by using continued fractions. Uh, and this is a really interesting, you know, topic something to look into, but uh, it's not always hard to guess, especially when the numbers are kind of small. For example, have you seen that 25 minus 24 is equal to one, and 25 happens to be a perfect square, and six y squared, 24 is six times a perfect square, right? So basically what it means is that five comma two is going to be a solution to this equation. Again, guess and check, I know that, but we can find the solution that way, right? It works, okay. Now, let's take a look at another example, and there are many examples. That's why I'm going to include the links in the description so you can kind of look up the Wikipedia article. There's a lot of good information in there. Make sure to look through that, and there's also uh, good links at the bottom of the article. So x squared minus five y squared is equal to one. And in this case, for example, uh, what is it gonna be? It's gonna be nine comma four, right? Because 91, I mean, what am I saying? 81 minus 80 is equal to one, right? So nine comma four is gonna be a solution. Now, we said that D should be square free. Now, why is that so? Like what happens if, if uh, D is a perfect square such as four? Let's take a look at this one. Obviously this is not Pal's equation, but we can still attempt to solve it, right? Because it's factorable, come on. It's factorable over the field of integers. So x plus two y, x minus two y is equal to one. Great. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that, well, how do you factor one, right? If you're looking for positive solutions, I would probably go with this, one and one, right? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and solve for x and y here. You get two x equals two, x equals one, and then y equals zero. Obviously, that's always a trivial solution. That's not what we're looking for. By the way, I forgot to say, x squared minus dy squared is equal to one, gives you a hyperbola. And we're looking for lattice point on the hyperbola. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye. And quick announcement, I also posted it, but let me just say here that you can submit solutions. There's gonna be a form for you to fill out if you would like to submit solutions. If you need credit for the problem, then make sure to mention your YouTube username. Thank you, have a good one.